Hey guys, it's Ron. This is Lab 15, and we'll be covering VLANs, trunking, and sub-interfaces. Okay, so VLANs, what do we use them for? Uh, VLANs are a great way to segment our network. So if I want to group all my engineering guys, I can do that with, with a VLAN. I group all my sales guys, I do that with a VLAN, and vice versa. Uh, and what this will do is if an engineering computer goes absolutely haywire and starts generating a ton of broadcasts, it's only going to you know, really affect those guys inside of that engineering VLAN. It's not going to hurt the sales guys' computers or the management guys' computers. Also, if I have an engineering uh, server that I want to restrict access to, uh, with VLANs, I can jet, I can put access lists in between uh, the two VLANs and say, you know what, sales guys, you're not allowed to access this uh, server, but my management guys, you can go right through and access the server. So it allows me to add at least a, a small layer of security in there. Also, you know, if if I'm using VoIP phones, I don't necessarily want VoIP traffic. Uh, to, to be mixing with my data traffic, right? So I can I can specify, you know, I can put them on their own VLAN and specify different kind of QoSs, you know, stuff like that, different uh, layers of security, you know, between, you know, that voice and that access. So VLANs allow me to do that. So to get started, we'll just grab a switch. We'll throw it up here and we'll add our users to it, okay? So I'm just going to use a straight through cable I'm going to go port 1, port 2, port 3, and port 4. All right. So what I've got here is I've got engineering, sales, and two management computers. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create VLANs uh, to kind of segment you know, that traffic or those users. So the old school way of doing it was you had to... You, you know you have to add it to the VLAN database so in privilege exec mode you go VLAN database and then you would just add the add the VLAN in there so VLAN 100 uh, name will give this engineering alright and I'm good to go it's been added to the database and I will proceed in adding all the rest of my VLANs well like I said this is the old school method of doing it uh, if we do a show flash there's a vlan.dat up here and this is the vlan database kind of file so if, if you get rid of that file you're going to end up having to add all your vlans back in so uh, if you don't wipe that file uh, like let's say you have got a brand new switch and you don't wipe uh, the vlan.dat file uh, when you bring it up you'll notice you have all the old vlans still in there so just food for thought but in, in config t this is where uh, we're supposed to be adding our VLANs. So if we do a VLAN 101 and give it a name of sales and then VLAN 102 we'll give it a name of management. Alright, so now our VLANs are added to that database. So now we they just uh, need to be added now to the ports. So I'm going to do a interface range FA 0 slash 1 through 4 and specify a couple of commands that are going to be common to all those ports like switch port access or switch port mode access and then spanning tree port fast okay uh, then we're going to go ahead and actually put the VLANs on there so interface uh, FA 0 slash 1 switch port access VLAN 100 interface FA 0 slash 2 switch port access VLAN 101 interface FA range FA uh, 0 slash 3 through 4 switch port access VLAN 102 okay so now the VLANs have been added uh, spanning trees doing its thing, uh, and that's this is just a, a packet tracer thing. Uh, they should have come up automatically because they're set to port fast. Uh, but when they come up here, we'll, uh, what we should see is that we can ping uh, from inside the same VLAN, but not outside the VLAN. Okay, so still waiting, waiting. 
Gotta love spanning tree. Alright, so our computers came up. We'll do a ping 192.168.102.3. So this is from one management computer to another management computer. However, if I try to ping one of the other VLANs, so 101.2, it's not going to work because there's no mechanism in place for allowing that traffic in between the two. Okay? Now, I can in here do an interface VLAN 100. And some people create those down here. But in my case, this is a layer 2 switch. So even if I did an IP address, 192.168.100.1.255.255.255.0. Then I did an interface VLAN 101. IP address 192.168.101.1.255.255.255.0. Do show IP interface brief. So now I've got these VLANs down here, these interface VLANs. They've got their IP address, they're up, up, everything looks happy. But I still am going to have trouble. So I can do a ping 192.168.168.100.1. Still can't type 100.1. What I'll find is that I can ping the interface, right? So after it does its ARP, okay? So I can ping the interface, but I cannot, I still can't leave uh, my VLAN. Okay, and that's because again I'm on a layer two switch. Okay, I, I can't, uh, I don't have that mechanism for talking between the two. So here in a bit we'll we'll figure out how to do that. In the meantime, let's let's uh, let's go through another scenario. All right, so in scenario two, uh, what we've got is this management guy got a promotion, and that promotion came with a, a larger office. And that larger office happens to be out across the building or in another building on a completely separate switch. So what we need to do is he walks into his new office, plugs in his computer, or plugs into the wall uh, kind of plug, but uh, he needs to get back to the original VLAN he was on because he, you know, his job didn't change necessarily. He's still part of management, but uh, He's just in a different office. So what we do is uh, this switch here needs to be hooked back in to our original switch. All right. So you're not just going to have a switch out there floating, connected to nothing. So this switch is going to be connected in, and we're going to make it a trunk. So interface FA0 slash 24, uh, switch port, uh, mode, trunk. Now ordinarily we would have to do a switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q however this command is not supported in packet tracer so you don't see it there okay but on an, an ordinary switch you're gonna have to make sure that you're using the right encapsulation okay we'll do the same thing over here Enable config T interface FA zero slash twenty four switch port mode trunk. All right. Now, if we do a do show VLAN, notice we don't have any of the VLANs that we created before. So we're going to go ahead and uh, recreate our management VLAN. So VLAN one hundred and two name management okay now we're gonna go ahead and add it to the port so interface FA 0 slash 1 switch port access or switch port mode access switch port uh, access VLAN 102 and switch port uh, or not switch port spanning tree port fast alright so now if I do a do show interface trunk, what we have is FA024 is our trunk. 
It's using 802.1Q encapsulation, native VLAN 1. And what this means is that if a, uh, a frame comes in and it hasn't already been tagged as being a part of another VLAN, we're just going to assume that it's part of VLAN 1. Okay. Now you can fix that by going back into uh, our trunk port, uh, FA024, and do a switch port trunk, uh, native VLAN, and then whatever VLAN you want it to be. Okay. Now on here we're also allowing every VLAN to go through. But if, if we didn't want it to be that way, we can do interface FA0-24, switch port, trunk, and we have allowed VLAN, and then we can add, we can do all, we can accept, uh, or we could do a remove. Okay, so we can really kind of customize which trunks we want, or which VLANs we want to pass uh, through this trunk. In my case, I'm just going to, uh, you know, allow all of them, you know, the default. Okay, so let's see if it worked. All right, so we should be able to bring our computer up, ping 192.168. Uh, 102.2 and it goes through. So now he moved offices, uh, plugged into the wall, we did a little configuration on the switch to add the VLAN. Uh, it should have already had a trunk in place if this was already a part of our infrastructure and we're up and running. You know, no real change to the user. Okay. But we're still having this problem of not being able to go from management to sales or or you know to engineering or, or anything any other VLAN. So that's what we'll that's what uh, we'll tackle next. All right, so here we go. So in order to add that functionality to our network, we're going to go ahead and add a layer three device, which is our router. Okay, so we're going to make a connection from our fast ether zero one port down to port twenty three which will bring those VLANs down alright so we'll do an interface FA zero slash twenty three switch port mode trunk and then on our router no enable config T so here we're going to go into FA0 slash 1, interface FA0 slash 1. Now I just, I'm writing out this command even though it's probably already set to no IP address right this second, but I just want you to realize that on the actual interface itself, we're not going to add an IP address. What we're going to do is just do a no shut so that the interface comes up, and then we're going to build sub interfaces. And these sub interfaces are what's going to work with our VLANs. Okay, so we'll do an interface FA zero slash one decimal, and then we're going to give this sub interface a number. Now you can you can give it you know the number that you want, but typically I add uh, I make the number match the VLAN number. That way, when I do a show IP interface brief, you know it's real easy for me to say okay. Sub interface 100 is is for VLAN 100. All right, it's just something easy to look at. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is specify an encapsulation. So we've got dot one Q, and if you had a, a real router, you might have ISL, but in, in our case, we're just using dot one Q. Now I need to specify the VLAN tag that we're going to add to it. So this is VLAN 100. We're going to give it an IP address of 192.168.100.1, 255, And then we're going to specify our other ones. So interface FA 0 slash 1 decimal 101, encapsulation dot 1Q, and we're going to tag it as VLAN 101, IP address 192.168.101.1. All right, now interface FA 0 slash 1 decimal 102, encapsulation dot 1Q, uh, VLAN, or er, not VLAN, but just the VLAN number. All right, now IP address 19168.101.1. All right, 
And so now we're done. Let's go ahead and see if it works. All right, so we're green, green, we're good to go. Let's see if I can ping from a management computer to the sales computer. All right, let's bring it down here, bring up our run, we'll do a ping 192.168.101. Uh, well, we were going, yeah, we're going to our sales. So 101.1 .1, or dot two for the computer. So what should be happening is I'm going to ARP for it, but it goes all the way back to the router, and the router uh, then resends that ARP request out on VLAN 101. The computer responds. It goes all the way back up to the router and then back down to me. And now I can ping, uh, ping that computer. Now, I'm not pinging that computer directly. I'm going from here up to my router. My router changes it from VLAN 102 down to VLAN 101 and it goes back out. Okay? So now we can talk in between our VLANs. So I mentioned before that you can restrict traffic in between sales and management. So to do that, you end up building an access list on our router, on our layer 3 device that's handling that uh, uh, VLAN to VLAN traffic. Now, we'll do access lists in, a, in another lab, but that's essentially where you're going to specify. You're going to specify uh, maybe an incoming uh, you know, access list so that if it's incoming on the 101, we only allow certain traffic to go. You know, if it's outgoing, you know, vice versa. You know, you, you could do a couple different things, but basically now you can say coming from the IPs here, which is my VLAN 102, I don't want it to be able to go to VLAN 100. Uh, and so you can restrict how traffic you know, traverses your network, who can access what. Uh, and so do, you know, VLANs did that for you. So I hope you learned something. I hope it was worthwhile for you watching. You know, I, I appreciate uh, any feedback that I get. You know, was the lab good? Was it bad? Uh, did you fall asleep? Well, let me know, man, and, uh, you know, I'll try to see what I can do. Um, like I said, VLANs are pretty cool. Uh, thanks for watching.